Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. We invite you to our website at ebiblefellowship.org for additional Bible studies. And now with his study in the Book of Romans, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Romans. Tonight is study number 31 of Romans chapter 3, and we'll begin reading in verse 18. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. We have been looking at the statement in verse 18 that there is no fear of God before their eyes, and and uh, it, it's a very evident truth. When we see what the Bible says, and we read God's law, his commandments, that that he commands the world, he commands all the people of the world to do this, and yes, he has a right to command them. He made them, and it, he is the potter. We are all the clay. And it, it, But unfortunately, um, the overwhelming vast majority of vessels are vessels unto dishonor due to their sinful condition, their rebellion against God. And, you know, we speak of, or, or we make reference to that, and sometimes uh, we we say the word and and uh, uh, maybe over a period of time, and it, it, it just becomes um, something that we're accustomed to saying. But it is, uh, without question, a definite truth that the world, the people of the world, the sinner individually is a rebel, is a rebel, is in rebellion against God, the creator. And the the world has done its best to glorify rebels uh, in um, their stories, their fictional stories, or even if they find rebels in history, they they may elevate them to a high status level of veneration. Um, they, they like to hold up rebels because that's their nature, but they tend to look at the rebel who is actually the, the good guy fighting against the evil king like Robin Hood against some cruel, ruthless ruler or king or sheriff, and and they like to portray themselves in in a favorable light. Well, that's nowhere near the truth. Nowhere near the truth of the Bible. The truth is that the good one is God, and God alone. God is good. His word is good. His law is good. He is kind. Uh, he is loving. He is truthful. He is faithful. He is gentle, he is merciful, he is just, and uh, a thousand other attributes, if we could uh, manage to name them all, if they have to do with being good and perfect and right, then they can be properly applied to God. They describe the God of the Bible. And man is exactly the opposite in all those attributes. Man is not good. He is evil. Man is not just. He is unjust. Man, the rebel, is not righteous. He is unrighteous. He is not kind. He is cruel. He, he is not loving. He is hateful. And on and on and on. These are the facts. These are how the Bible presents the picture. When God speaks of the sinner, he he doesn't ever speak of him in in good terms. He never describes the sinner as someone basically good, as someone basically kind. The Lord doesn't 
present anything in the Bible that I'm aware of that would say one good thing about the sinner in his sin. Can you imagine that in this big book, in this big book, that there's nothing flattering, nothing favorable, nothing that that would ascribe any goodness of any kind whatsoever to the creature made in God's own image. Now, yeah, you can find good things uh, in the beginning when God created man because he was good. And you can find good things said of God's elect people, the saints of God. We, We can read good things said of Daniel and good things said of Joseph and good things said of Abraham and so on. But that's only because God has changed them. God has transfigured them in soul with a future transfiguring to come of the body. God has has made them new creatures. He has restored their soul to its its proper place of obedience and perfection uh, and, and righteousness. The soul is without sin in the newly born again person. But as far the rest of people or man in his naturally fallen condition where there's no change he's dead in soul uh, the curse of sin and, and corruption in his body and soon the body will die that man and that is again just about everyone uh, billions and billions of people with uh, only the few the elect the exceptions they are rebels rebels not in any kind of idolized way, but rebels in, in the sense of villainy and and uh, of of the worst criminal, uh, the worst offender. They are transgressors, breakers of a holy covenant, breakers of the law, and and on and on and on and on it goes. These are the ones. That, that God is describing here in Romans 3, and he says there's no fear of God before their eyes. They live their lives apart from God. They get up in the morning, and, and they don't get down on their knees, or they don't pray. Um, they, they do not turn to the Bible and open up the Word of God and start their day reading the Bible and reading what God has said, and and they don't consider this is the word of God, and and they don't ask God for His help. They don't they don't beseech the Lord for um, His grace for 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 help in obeying Him, help in working that day, help in living their life and keeping His commandments. No, it it, it is God shut out. They've turned their backs on God and they wake up and eat and, and dress and off they go and they, they live throughout the day. No thought of God. There's no thought, uh, hardly at all. And, and then they come back and that's the way the day goes. That's the way the day goes. Well, you know, God tells us, uh, concerning man, and fear, and that's what we're looking at. And I think we're learning some um, necessary things because we read of fearing the Lord repeatedly in the Bible in many places. So I, I'm, I'm glad we're having this opportunity to spend some time really um, taking a, a thorough look into it in Proverbs chapter 9, we read in verse 10, the fear of Jehovah is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. If you remember in our last study, Proverbs 1 verse 7 said, the fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. And here, the fear of Jehovah is the beginning of wisdom. And it's saying the same thing. Because a person cannot begin to fear God until they become saved. As far as keeping his commandments, no, they won't be able to do it. 
they won't be able to do it. And and the Bible says, fear God and keep his commandments. So if you say, well, I fear God, but then fail to keep his commandments, you're not fearing God. And, and, and that's why you first must be saved and salvation is of the Lord. God does all the work in the matter of saving the sinner. And, and so he, he has accomplished that, let's say, in the life of this person. And right away now from the heart, they have the fear of the Lord. They keep his commandments perfectly and they have wisdom. They, they have Christ within. They are counted wise. So it, it all is tied together. The fear of Jehovah is the beginning of wisdom. In Proverbs 10, verse 27, we read, The fear of Jehovah prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. And, and uh, with the contrast, we can see that the fear of Jehovah must identify with salvation because it is only salvation that prolongs days. And, and that's a figure of speech to represent eternal life. And uh, it would not be because of our work or our doing and fearing God, but only that God first saved us, which leads us to fear him uh, because he has already performed the work of salvation in our heart. And that prolongs our days forevermore. And, uh, but on the other hand, the years of the wicked shall be shortened. It doesn't mean they may not live to 70 or 80, the um, same as, as we. Uh, God's not talking about our natural lifespan. And, and it's the same for the just and the unjust. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. And illness comes to the just and the unjust. And, and some of the, the unjust live quite long periods of time. And a few of the just live long periods of time it, it, uh, in this world. So it's not speaking of that. It must be the spiritual life or lack of it um, that is in view. And, or that is, it must be God either extending the life of a person, and and we know the only extension that the Bible speaks of is eternity, or not extending the life, and therefore the years of the wicked are shortened. In Proverbs 16, we read in verse uh, 6, it says, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of Jehovah, men depart from evil. Again, after God has saved us and he has um, filled us with his spirit and we have our new heart and spirit, we now have that ongoing desire to do the will of God from a heart that keeps his commandments and therefore fears him perfectly. And from that point forward, we depart from evil. There's, there's still sin in our personality, in our, in our physical body. And so God starts the process that works out in our life. This is the process where we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling to bring the body under, to um, turn from certain sins that, that the body is desiring and that we have engaged in. And no, we're going to uh, bring the tongue under. We're not going to speak so loosely. We're, we're going to bring our thoughts under the commandments of God, and we're not going to think so, so freely or carelessly, letting our mind run to sinful things, as has been um, typically the case in our life. But now we're a new creature, and, and we our, our soul and the spirit of God within is not pleased that our mind is thinking as it did when we were not a new creature. So all these things come into view and, and we start departing from evil. In Proverbs 23, we read in verses 17 and 18, 
Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of Jehovah all the day long, for surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. What does it mean to be in the fear of Jehovah all the day long? And and what is all the day long referring to? It's referring to our life because we live day by day. And, and to be in the fear of Jehovah all the day long means we keep his commandments all the day long. Of course, we, we can also think of this reference to all the day long to referring to the day of salvation when it was the day of salvation, but now it has application to the day of judgment. So throughout judgment day, um, let not your heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of Jehovah all the day long. That is same same direction. It never changes from the uh, original creation. It, it was the direction given to Adam. It is the direction given to the new creatures who, who God has saved. Once we become saved, fear God, keep his commandments. It is the direction that would have been given to God's saints throughout um, the entirety of the New Testament era of the church age and, and the great tribulation. And now it's the direction for the day of judgment. Continue to fear God and keep his commandments. You've been listening to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Visit our website at ebiblefellowship.org for additional studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.